Chapters 1 through 3 of Luke from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Vivian Bush. The Book of Luke from the World English Bible. Chapters 1 through 3. Chapter 1. Since many have undertaken to set in order a narrative concerning those matters which have been fulfilled among us, even as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having traced the course of all things accurately from the first, to write to you in order, most excellent Theophilus, that you might know the certainty concerning the things in which you were instructed. There were in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the priestly division of Abijah. He had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well advanced in years. Now it happened, while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. The whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. An angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zacharias, because your request has been heard, and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord, their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zacharias said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you, and to bring you this good news. Behold, you will be silent and not able to speak, until the day that these things will happen, because you didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their proper time. The people were waiting for Zacharias, and they marveled that he delayed in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. He continued making signs to them, and remained mute. It happened when the days of his service were fulfilled, he departed to his house. After these days Elizabeth, his wife, conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus has the Lord done to me in the days in which he looked at me, to take away my reproach among men. Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, you highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered what kind of salutation this might be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and will call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. There will be no end to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, seeing I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is born from you will be called the Son of God. Behold, Elizabeth your relative also has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for everything spoken by God is possible. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it to me according to your word. The angel departed from her. Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. It happened when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting that the baby leaped in her womb, 
and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She called out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came into my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of the things which have been spoken to her from the Lord. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has looked at the humble state of his handmaid. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is for generations of generations on those who fear him. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He has put down princes from their thrones, and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and he has sent the rich away empty. He has given help to Israel, his servant, that he might remember mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his seed forever. Mary stayed with her about three months, and then returned to her house. Now the time that Elizabeth should give birth was fulfilled, and she brought forth a son. Her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had magnified his mercy towards her, and they rejoiced with her. It happened on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zacharias, after the name of the father. His mother answered, Not so, but he will be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. They made signs to his father what he would have him called. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. They all marveled. His mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Fear came on all those who lived around them, and all these sayings were talked about throughout all the hill country of Judea. All who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? The hand of the Lord was with him. His father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and worked redemption for his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been from of old, salvation from our enemies, and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy towards our fathers, to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he spoke to Abraham our father, to grant to us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, should serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the face of the Lord to make ready his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the dawn from on high will visit us, to shine on those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child was growing and becoming strong in spirit, and was in the desert until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Chapter 2 Now it happened in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment made while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to enroll themselves, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to enroll himself with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him as wife, being pregnant. It happened while they were there that the day had come that she should give birth. She brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a feeding trough, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds in the same country staying in the field, and keeping watch by night over their flock. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will be to all the people. For there is born to you this day, in the city of David, a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. This is the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, good will toward men. 
It happened when the angels went away from them into the sky, that the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem now, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They came with haste, and found both Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying in the feeding trough. When they saw it, they publicized widely the saying which was spoken to them about this child. All who heard it wondered at the things which were spoken to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these sayings, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, just as it was told them. When eight days were fulfilled for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the days of their purification according to the law of Moses were fulfilled, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. He came in the Spirit into the temple. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, that they might do concerning him according to the custom of the law, then he received him into his arms, and blessed God, and said, Now you are releasing your servant, Master, according to your word in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light for revelation to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and his mother were marveling at all the things which were spoken concerning him, and Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which is spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, and she had been a widow for about eighty-four years, who didn't depart from the temple, worshipping with fastings and petitions night and day. Coming up at that very hour, she gave thanks to the Lord, and spoke of him to all those who were looking for redemption in Jerusalem. When they had accomplished all things that were according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. The child was growing, and was becoming strong in spirit, being filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. His parents went every year to Jerusalem at the feast of the Passover. When he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast, and when they had fulfilled the days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. Joseph and his mother didn't know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey and they looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. When they didn't find him, they returned to Jerusalem looking for him. It happened after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When they saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I were anxiously looking for you. He said to them, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? They didn't understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. He was subject to them, and his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and men. Chapter 3 Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. He came into all the region around the Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled, every mountain and hill will be brought low. 
the crooked will become straight, and the rough ways smooth. All flesh will see God's salvation. He said therefore to the multitudes who went out to be baptized by him, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and don't begin to say among yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I tell you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe also lies at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that doesn't bring forth good fruit is cut down, and thrown into the fire. The multitudes asked him, What then must we do? He answered them, He who has two coats, let him give to him who has none. He who has food, let him do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what must we do? He said to them, Collect no more than that which is appointed to you. Soldiers also asked him, saying, What about us? What must we do? He said to them, Extort from no one by violence, neither accuse any one wrongfully. Be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation, and all men reasoned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he was the Christ, John answered them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but he comes who is mightier than I, the latchet of whose sandals I am not worthy to loosen. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor, and will gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then with many other exhortations he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things which Herod had done, added this also to them all, that he shut up John in prison. Now it happened when all the people were baptized, Jesus also had been baptized, and was praying. The sky was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form as a dove on him, and a voice came out of the sky, saying, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. Jesus himself, when he began to teach, was about thirty years old, being the son, as it was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Matthiot, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jani, the son of Joseph, the son of Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Math, the son of Matthias, the son of Simeon, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joanan, the son of Resi, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosam, the son of Elmodam, the son of Ur, the son of Jose, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram, the son of Matthiot, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Eliakim, the son of Malaya, the son of Menon, the son of Matthiatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashan, the son of Amminadab, the son of Aram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahaliel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. End of chapters 1 through 3. Recording by Vivian Bush, Houston, Texas, on December 9, 2007.